Hi, welcome to the next year of Beer Blog. Uh, this is um, quite excited about this one tonight because not only we are breaking out a big fancy Ponzi wine glass, but we've also got a, a Ponzi tiny little wine glass as well. <coughs> now the reason for that is the beer that we've got tonight has, uh, well there's a reason for it, the beer's got a little bit of loose sediment that I want to try and capture. But uh, the beer is Thornbridge Halcyon. This is uh, Thornbridge, is a, Thornbridge are a, a, a British craft brewery, they're based in the Peak District and they brew just sort of fantastically really precise clean exciting full flavored british ales and the release of halcyon every year um it's fair to say it's a bit of a, a bit of a landmark event people look forward to it halcyon is their wet hopped ipa so it's taking fresh hops that, that haven't been dr been through the drying process um they they get them overnighted to the brewery uh, and they brew with the undried hops and the idea is that brewing with wet hops um gives the, the beer a much bigger, kind of fresher, more resinous hop profile. Now the interesting thing about, about um, Thornbridge at the moment, they've just scaled up to a much, much bigger brewery. I was there at the opening, um, was it this year or last year? They all seem to blur into one when you reach a certain age. But their, their new brewery is like beer in space, it's fantastic. But a knock-on effect of that is that, to a certain extent, they're having to just kind of relearn what they're doing. They've got lots of... Um, got lots of new equipment, they've got lots of interesting new processes that they're, that they're trying out. So the knock-on effect of all of that is that there's quite a lot of loose sediment in, uh, in this year's Halcyon. Now I think in some ways it's great because it means that the beer hasn't been messed around with, it hasn't been filtered to death. Um, but what I'm going to do is just try and pour off as much as I can. Now I spoke to, uh, I spoke to the brewer, or one of the brewers there, uh, Kelly, and he, um, he told me that what they think has happened is that there is a lot of um, what he described as polyphenol and colloid uh, has come through that they don't filter, I'm just going to stop that, they don't filter the beer but they centrifuge it and what, what they found is that what they think has happened is a lot of uh, polyphenol and colloid has come through the centrifuge. So you can see that's slightly hazy but a lovely kind of coppery gold colour. This is uh, a different kettle of fish altogether. Now normally when, uh, when a brewery bottle conditions a beer, the yeast will flocculate, it will clump together and it will sink to the bottom of the bottle and it will cling to the bottom of the bottle and, uh, and it will just stay there when you pour it out, more or less. But what they're saying that has happened this time, the colloid and the polyphenol matter um, has, they have electrostatic charges and the particles have clung to the yeast which effectively prevents the yeast from flocculating properly so the yeast isn't attracted to itself it won't stick together but instead it just remains in kind of hazy suspension and that you know that's that's the result they're not getting a yeast that's compacting properly um, does it affect the taste and that smells fantastic you know if i was served that blind i'd be really excited to drink it should we try it yeah let's mm. It's maybe got a little bit of a texture to it, a very slightly powdery texture. Mm. But that tastes fantastic. <coughs> really good example of why you shouldn't always be too worried about mixing up a little bit of sediment with your beer. You know, sometimes beer is best served bright, sometimes a little bit of sediment mixed in there isn't going to make a lot of difference. That tasted fantastic. Let's have a look at the... Uh, that's, I mean, that's got a very slight haze on it. I'm guessing some of that is going to be the, uh, the, the, the yeast from the bottle. A little bit of it may be sort of hop haze as well. Big orangey marmalade citrusy thing going on. A little bit of spice, a little bit of earthiness as well. Mm. That's big. There's a slight kind of note of alcohol in there. But it's a big sort of marmalade, orange squash, and a bit of spice as well. The texture is great. It's just got that fantastic balance between slightly sticky and sweet and bitter and dry. So it does that fantastic sort of two-step thing across the palate. Big, sweet, and you just start to get a little bit of a bitter tang. The bitterness builds, but it never, it never really, it never really goes over the top. So that's Thornbridge. That's Thornbridge's Halcyon for 
2009 harvest. I guess maybe it's been it's been held in tank for a little while while they try and resolve some of those sediment issues. I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe Kelly will um, comment on the blog. But that's it. That's Thornbridge Halcy, and that's a very very lovely, exciting, resinous IPA that uh, I'm looking forward to. Well, I'm hoping I'm going to be able to save that glass for what I've got for tea this evening, which is uh, we're having kedgeree. So kedgeree, just basically a spiced smoked fish and rice. Uh, I'm going to hoof up a recipe for that on my blog at thebeerboy.blogspot.com. Do go and check it out. It'll probably work well with any nice um, full-bodied IPA. If you can find Thornbridge Halcyon, do check it out. Um, and if, you, if you've got the guts to do it, do try drinking the yeast sediment out of the bottom. I think, having tried both of them, that somehow the, 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 the yeasty stuff has a, although it's got a bit of a texture, it somehow has, has a little more flavour as well. I don't know if it's possible that, um, that there are flavour compounds that are, that are sticking themselves to all of that kind of sediment, but somehow it was more tasty, whereas this is brighter and cleaner and fresher. So as horses, of course, there are two beers out of one bottle. You don't get that very often, do you? Anyway, thanks for stopping by. I'm going to not drink this while I finish cooking, and we'll see you next time. Cheers.